Now, I'm going to be honest here. When I first took up this project of doing a TEDx talk, I was afraid. But at the same time, I was excited. Because, I mean, it's TED. And for the topic I decided to share with you all today, it's a topic that has been close to my heart for around a year now. And it's the topic of becoming a better person, achieving goals, and learning new things. And I believe to understand this topic, we must understand the brain and how it works. And this way, we would be able to maximize the brain to our fullest potential. Now, there is a really important term to understand uh, so that we can be able to understand the brain. And the term is neuroplasticity. If you know what it is, then that's great. If you don't, well, you came to the right place. Neuroplasticity is the capacity of neurons and neural networks in the brain to change themselves based on new information, sensory stimulation, development, damage, and dysfunction. So what are neurons? Neurons are basically the cells in the brain which are involved in transmitting information from the brain to the body and vice versa. But more importantly for our topic, neurons are what allow you to learn new things. And they are also what allow you to keep these new things in your long-term memory. So what essentially happens is that when you learn something new, your neurons will reconfigure themselves. Basically, they will build new, new connections and they will get rid of unnecessary connections, thus fine-tuning your brain. Now, neuroplasticity is mainly observed in children, especially in babies, because they have really high levels of neuroplasticity. When babies are first born, they don't know anything. We all know that. And they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to walk. But as they develop their neurons, so as they observe people around them, their neurons begin to reconfigure themselves. They begin to develop new connections. And this way, they allow themselves to learn how to walk and learn how to talk. In the brain, we have 86 billion neurons. Each of those neurons has 10,000 connections. So that's around 100 trillion connections. I'm telling you this to give you some perspective of how much potential we humans have. And if we were able to use all of this potential, how much of a better place would the world become? Now that we know what neuroplasticity is, I want to uh, I want to answer another important question: Why? Why don't we learn new things? Why don't we go out of our way to learn more than what our schools have to provide us? To learn more than what our job requirements provide us? Well, I've identified three different reasons, and I will share them with you today. The first reason is the fear of failure. We all fear failure. We all want to pass that really important test. We all want to get a good grade on our homework. And we all want to impress our bosses. But if we consume our minds with the idea that we must succeed all the time, then we will drown in our own fear and actually fail. And we can also make the decision of it's either I succeed or I don't do anything at all. Because it's a very unwise decision that will cause you to regret it in your entire life. Now, there was a research conducted on deathbed patients, and the number one thing they regret is not trying new things. They, they regret not being able to learn something new. They don't regret failure. That's quite surprising, isn't it? A football player by the name of Patrick Bamford, he plays in the Premier League, was once asked, what is your number one tip for scoring more goals? He said, not being afraid to miss. What is, he what is he trying to say here? He's trying to say here, since he's not afraid to miss, he would take more chances. He would shoot more shots and eventually he'll score a goal. All these successful people you see around you in the world, they failed more than you and me. And that's how they reached their success. What I'm trying to tell you here is that if you fail more, your probability of success will be higher. This doesn't mean you can just go ahead and fail, because it, it would be pretty useless. You must use that failure of yours to improve yourselves. So when you fail in something, you identify why you failed. So emphasis on the word identify. Identify why you failed, and get back up and go again. And this way, you would be able to increase your chances of success. The second reason why we don't take action is addiction. We all know what addiction is. We all are addicted to something. Addiction is when you're attached to something so much that you can't live without it. 
So in the brain, there's this response called the pleasure pain response. So what what the pleasure pain response is? What is the pleasure pain response? The pleasure pain response is when you try a new addictive habit out and you try it out for the first time, you will get a dose of pleasure from it. But you, what you may not notice is that you also get a dose of pain. Pain means craving. So you will enjoy this addictive habit for the first time, but at the same time, you will crave it. And that's why you do it for a second time. And as you keep doing this addictive habit, what you may not notice is that the dose of pleasure will begin to decrease and that dose of pain will begin to increase. So basically, you start hating that addictive habit, but you have no choice. You can't live without it. For example, me. I'm addicted to YouTube. I know. <laughs> I'm addicted to YouTube. I reached the point where I hate watching YouTube, but it's like that itch that I have to scratch. Now, I'm not a mental health psychologist, so I don't know how to deal with addiction, but what I can tell you is this. In life, we have a really short period of time. Do we really want to waste it on useless things that weigh us down and stop us from achieving our fullest potential? Or do we want to become the best versions of ourselves? Now, the third reason why we don't take action is the saying that we're too busy. Uh, we all say it, right? But according to Floyd Mayweather, one of the greatest boxers of all time, we're not actually that busy. In the day, we have 24 hours. Eight of those hours are for sleep, eight of those hours are for school or work, and three of those hours are for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So we have five hours left in the day. What if we were able to take a few minutes of those five hours into improving ourselves, into learning a new skill or honing our skill in something? How much of better people would we become by the end of the year, or by the end of the month, or even by the end of the week? Now, my tip for you to be able to maximize your time in the day and keep some free time to improve yourself is to create a daily routine. So basically, you write down everything that you do in the morning to the night. And this way, you would be able to identify whether you have free time or not. Now, all these three reasons fall under one big umbrella, and that is the umbrella of procrastination. I want to tell you a story. Three months ago, I went on a trip to my country. It was a trip meant to be for one month, right? But, uh, so I told myself, it's fine, I can work on the TEDx presentation once I come back. Turns out, I was wrong. Uh, so four days before I came back to Indonesia, uh, Indonesia turned, uh, Indonesia locked down. So basically, everyone in my family needed to vaccinate. and. No one in my family was vaccinated. So we had to stay in my country for the next two months. And the problem was the time difference. So I would join school at 1.30 a.m. in the morning, uh, 1.30 a.m. at night, basically, and finish at 9 a.m. in the morning. And it was crazy and tiring. So you may be asking me right now, why are you telling us this? I'm telling you this to teach you an important life lesson, that life is uncertain. We never know when we might get a new task or a new event that may ruin all of our plans. So what I suggest to you is that whenever you get a new task, you complete it as soon as possible. This way, you won't be overwhelmed when you get something new to do. Now, before I move on to the next part, I would like to tell you a quote from Marcus Aurelius. He is one of the last five good emperors of Rome. And he said, to live a good life, we have the potential for it, if we become indifferent to what makes no difference. He's trying to say that in life, there are things that are inessential to us, things that weigh us down, and things that don't help us in improving ourselves. So why don't we just cut them out? Because if we are able to cut these inessential things out, then maybe we might actually improve. Now that we answered the why question, I want to answer a how question. How can we improve ourselves, our learning sessions, to maximize the amount of time we learn? So my first tip is chunking and the idea of following the process. 
So imagine you have a pizza. There are two ways you could finish the pizza. One way you could just pick up the whole thing and shove it down your throat. You could possibly die, so I don't suggest you do that. And the second way is you could eat one slice at a time until you finish the pizza. Now that's what chunking is. It's breaking down a big task into smaller, more concise tasks to be able to finish them much more easily and be less overwhelmed by the end of it. And the idea of following the process is when you focus on the task that you're doing right now. Focus on what you have to do now. Don't think about what you have to do next week, because now is what is essential to you. My second tip is to avoid distractions. So I've identified three different distractions that we must avoid. The first distractions, the first type of distractions are mental distractions. So these are distractions that you get uh, during your learning sessions when you have when you remember something that you forgot to do, like doing the laundry or that you forgot to do another homework or something. So for this type of distraction, I suggest that you keep a paper beside you or a notebook beside you and you write down everything that you remember during your learning session. But don't stop learning yet. Finish what you have to do now and later come back to the thing that you remember. At least you have it written down and you can see it later. And, and uh, the second type of distraction is physical distraction. So these are the types of distractions that you get, like loud noises in your room or a video game controller on your desk that is bugging you to pick it up. For this type of distraction, I would suggest that you just clear out your desk. Clear out all that is not important to you during your learning session. So if there's a video game controller, remove it so that your mind won't occupy you with the thoughts of having to go play a video game. And for the last type of distraction, it, these are digital distractions. So let's say you have to work on your homework on the laptop. So digital distractions can come from notifications from your friends or unnecessary tabs that can occupy your mind. Basically, just stop those notifications or and close all the tabs that are unnecessary to your work. Now, the last tip for me is to journal. Because I believe everything starts from self-awareness. If we can understand what we, if we can understand our emotions and what we can handle and what we can, then maybe we could take action. If we know what we're bad at and what we're good at, then maybe we can improve what we're bad at. Because everything starts from self-awareness. If you understand yourself, then you can take action. Now, before I go, I would like to say one more thing. Take a step back. Look at yourself. Stop blaming our, the school system. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your boss. And see if you're actually part of the blame. See if there's something wrong with you that needs to be improved. And maybe if each and every one of us improves ourselves as human beings, maybe, just maybe, the world will become a better place. Thank you. <laughs>